Welcome back to another episode of Modular Wild. I am Raul. This time we're going to be doing a little bit of bit crushing with the Phonotronic ADC pattern sequencer. Uh, this was a, a trick sort of shared with me by Matthias Hermann from Phonotronic uh, that he said that uh, one of the guys over at Schneider's Leiden over in Berlin uh, mentioned this to him and that it kind of had a cool kind of bit crushing effect. So we're going to actually go through uh, how you get that type of sound with this and uh, how it actually works. So in the previous demos, you saw that we were sending a low frequency signal via, you know, pulse or a square wave uh, from an LFO and going into the clock input over here. And then that would just make our sequence move along and then we would get notes. They would come out of the CV out. And then it would also generate triggers based on the width of the clock. So what if you do it in audio rate, right? Because you can patch audio into this as well. Uh, not every se sequencer necessarily supports this, but this one does and it creates kind of a cool effect. So let's hear the bass sound that we're gonna be patching in there. Uh, and I actually have two types of sounds that we're gonna use. The first one's a synthesizer sound. So let's get that going. And uh, in order to do that, uh, I won't be able to use this for my CV notes, right? Because it's gonna be processing the audio. So if we look down at the bottom, I have the Synthrotech Sequence 8, and uh, this yellow cable is gonna be taking our CVs up into our quantizer. So let me patch that in. And then the black cable down here, which might be kinda hard to see, but there it is, is gonna be going over to our envelope. So here's our basic sound. And I may need to turn this up a little bit so you can hear it. There we go. Just turn it down a little bit. Okay, so now that I can get it over into the pattern sequencer, I'm gonna have to look at my patch a little bit. So I have the envelope triggering the VCA over here as you can see by the yellow cable, triggering the VCA. And then the output is going to our mixer, right? Um, the VCO, which is here in the middle, is actually sending the actual sound source that's getting triggered via the notes, right there from our quantizer. But I have a stack cable plugged in right there that you can see. So I'm gonna take a second output from there. And then I'm gonna just patch it over into the MH11 into the clock input this time. And you should immediately hear that. And let me turn this down a little bit. So I'm getting some distortion. Okay. So now let me just take out the original sound and we'll just listen to the bit crushing that's happening. And as you can hear, you're getting two flavors over here. So let me turn this down. This is from just the CV out. You're getting one flavor of distortion right there. Let me turn that down and then bring up the other one. This is via the trigger out. Both are kind of crunchy. Now if I want to vary this a little bit, what I can do is go in and adjust each individual step. You know, however I see fit to kind of adjust this effect. And then if I bring up the first one, you kind of hear that as well. Now you can also adjust this effect with this dial here. And this might be fairly subtle. I got my best results by actually mixing in a little bit of the original. So let me bring that back. Get a nice little crunchy kind of uh, effect going on since you have the original mixed in. And let's try a different waveform. So I'm gonna take this out. Right there I was on the pulse. So let me try maybe a saw. And 
you can also vary the effect by adjusting the envelope too. So you get an effect that you like. And then maybe bring in a little more of the original. So you're happy with what you got. And so that, in a nutshell, is the bit crushing soda setup. So let me unpatch all of these. Let's see, where else do I have that? Okay. Because now we're going to do a second type of sound source. So let me take this output here. And uh, if you look up in the top section, I got a little drum sequence going on up there. And uh, let's hear what that sounds like. And so if you're not familiar with this, so what's happening over here uh, in case you're wondering, is uh, let's see, we've got three sets of triggers that are going to be triggering a snare, a hi hat, and a kick drum. So let's hear what the original sounds like and get that patched up. So let me patch that in. So there's our original. Nice little boomy type of sound. Not patching into the MH11 yet. So let's hear what this sounds like. I'm going to take the output from here, which is our mix, and then go right into the clock in over here. Nice little distorted drums. Now, if I wanted to just hear the distorted version, I can bring my original drums down. And now, just as I did before, I can go in and adjust each step to vary my effect. So I'm happy with the effect that I'm getting at my output. And let me flip all the steps to on so we can kind of actually hear all of them. And you can experiment with this just to find what you know works best for you or which effect you like the most. But I like to kind of bring in some of the original as well, as I said before. So that's a pretty cool effect. I like it a lot. And then of course you could vary the pattern or, you know, change things up a little bit, you know, adjust your mix of the drums going in. Maybe like that. Till you get something that you like. All in all, I've found this patch to be quite a bit of fun, uh, especially since you can do quite a bit with it. Uh, once you get the basic setup patch going um, and you get that mix going to both places, not only to your um, maybe DAW where you're recording it or out to your tape player or whatever it is that you're using to record your output or your mixer, uh, and then get it feeding back into the pattern sequencer over here. So, pretty, pretty cool. So let me unpatch this now, since we had a good listen to that. And uh, I want to just make mention of this last thing uh, that was sort of mentioned to me. Um, I did not have enough time to actually do it in great detail, because I found that it was kind of a big can of worms that uh, I didn't necessarily want to open at this point. Uh, there is the possibility also of doing a graphic VCO type of effect with this guy here. Um, so let me give you just a basic idea as to what this is going to sound like. So you would basically take an output of a VCO, like say for example this one, maybe a saw wave, and then patch it right in to your clock in. And let me turn that down just a little bit. And then of course you could take the original, just like I did. If you wanted to get a little mixture of both. So let me turn that all the way down. So you can hear that's the one being processed via the MH11. Now let me turn the distorted one down so we can listen to the bass sound. And since that's so high, let me bring it down a little bit. 
Now let me bring up the distorted one. And then now you can go in and sort of adjust the individual steps. And there is, as I said, more to this patch, which I'm not going to go into in this case. But I did want you to know that it's possible out there. And if you know you did a, did a little exploration out there online, you could find the full details of how to patch a graphic VCO. So. At any rate, just wanted to mention that, since it is also a possibility in addition to normal audio processing. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this demonstration of the bit crushing effect with the Phonotronic MH11 ADC pattern sequencer. Um, hope that you found this useful. Uh, please stay tuned for future episodes of Modular Wild, and uh, we'll see you next time.